Hello and welcome! It's session number 54 of Outlander's Guide to Lidoria. Hello, everyone! Oh, hello. hello! Welcome back to your doom. <coughs> the tr tragedy that is your adventuring life in my hands. I've decided I've been it's fine. The yeah! <clears throat> Here's the table. We have returned once again. This time we managed to play only one week after the previous session. <laughs> That's... Ah. And Easter is coming. Oh no. Our streak. Someday we'll oh. hit double digits. <laughs> someday, someday. Well, 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 well. I'm, you guys can see it, but I'm turning my camera around. I'm zooming in on Sid's side of the table. You <gasps> know. Threatening manner. Oh no! Not me, not me! Everyone I choose me. you! Okay, fine. I uh, know yeah, you so... love it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, I, I love doing the recap. It's just sadly this week I didn't come up with any ideas. I just got lost in the, the sea of ideas. So I only have a plain little written recap that I'm going to voice to everyone today. Wow. So are we ready? You are not yeah. always without fail going above and beyond? Surprise, surprise. Well, <laughs> as I like to say, I'll allow it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let us travel back to the distant past of session 53. What happened then? What happened there? First, there was a vision. A large cube projections with runes. A very fancy centerpiece in the room, you might say, as a tall purplish blue figure in shimmering silks. You know, with all these visitors hanging around them, there must be some sort of celebrity or party plan or something. Something's going on. A very, very charismatic person. But everyone seems kind of afraid and confused about everything, so maybe the party's not that great after all. There's not even snacks here, so I don't know what he's doing. Um, anyway, back in the tower. Mr. Slithers, the never-ending hunger. He's just hanging out in the bathhouse, just having a grand old time, you know? And there's a lot of magic and bites and bullets, and after that, we play some rounds of prop hunt, but our party just kind of abuses the meta, and then he makes it unplayable <laughs> for Mr. Slithers. It's really a bummer for him. Dang. Um, after that, we find a Neteran spellbook that speaks its name in our minds similar to, similar to what Mr. Slithers did, and the name is the Dust Swept Grimoire. We also find a color-absorbing glass rapier who's got some lightning and storm inside it, which seems pretty fancy. Then there's a second vision. Tekka is diving into the spirit sea, and it seems like all these people, they just want to give him all the hugs, and they want to light up all this <laughs> darkness with their glowy eyes. It's a very sweet moment, actually. I like it. Uh, and Beyond that, the group now heads through the wasteland of Dustfall, followed by the group, the Legion of Orange Machines. Did you remember those? But they are still here. Uh, as they're getting lost, a shield vulture approaches and leads the whole group to back to the cave. It's actually a lot of these vultures, and apparently they've been watching us for a while now. That was the lingering feeling uh, that Brooke was sensing. What a bunch of nosy netties, huh? Just watching over us. Anyway, it seems Frida and Murderclaw have built a little hut while we're waiting, waiting about. And they've been taking care of the horses for room and Duchess in the meanwhile. And then, hooray! Reuniting's abound. But we still don't know where Talix is. I hope he's okay. Uh, also, hey, everyone, just making sure you know, uh, Pip transformed into like this megalith elephant. That <laughs> happened. That was a thing that happened. That's really cool. <laughs> Uh, and then Orm's Machine Snake forms a little archway for us so the, the rock slide doesn't keep happening. And then we can enter the now submerged and flooded cave. Squeak and Pontifex dies down, noticing the now broken crystal barrier. A missing necrotic dragon, oh no. And a few pockets of air that maybe we'll make, be able to make use of, I hope. Uh, reaching and now entirely submerged Narashk, the undead dragon Cloudfall is swimming around, having a grand old time. And as they move past the skull of the Stilling Dread, Pontifex now comes face to face with the spooky dragon! What's gonna happen next? Ah! Oh no! And then, a third vision. A large, translucent hand pulls Tekka up from the sea, 
of wonder and joy, communicating in a symphony of resonating emotions, affirming that Tekka is not of the sea, as they now find themselves in vividly colorful desert hills with elevated homes of carvings and murals around, people wearing these identifying hoods of kaleidoscopic hues, and a tall, translucent being it suits a certain grace and warmth, bringing a wordless invitation before Tekka is ripped away again. That is all. Aww, everything was so wholesome. Yeah, not a, one, not a problem in the world. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> you wish? <laughs> we say it enough, said. it will be true. <laughs> yeah, could that be a wishful thing inspiration, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> wishful thing inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Enjoy it. May it bring you the wholesomeness and positivity that you dream of. I hope. We're on ro one die, one die roll to decide it all. <laughs> Is this the inspiration 2.0? Perhaps so. Seems so. <laughs> yeah. 2.0. Either with the tree we got the recap to inspiration, or when we all described a dream for each other. One of those two. Oh, oh. I see, I see, I see. Speaking of, Austin, right, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. three <laughs> dice. <laughs> yeah. Breaking the rules over here. I, I, I'm holding on to it as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 don't, you can't have three dice. It just feels so special. <laughs> so, I know like, you're all... Oh, those, how you going? No, it was so unrelated. Please go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear it. <laughs> it's, okay, well, it reminds me of this glitch that was in Roblox at one point. Oh. Where you couldn't wear more than one hat at a time, but if you... If you clicked wear hat on multiple browsers at once on different computers <laughs> you could wear multiple at a time and oh people were like whoa <laughs> that's Amazing. that's kind of crazy that we share similar experiences like i used to play this this text-based role-playing game as a kid and like i also figured out you could have multiple tabs open and effectively perform multiple actions at once mm. uh, it's, it's a crafty yeah just I just wanted wanted better weapons. <laughs> <clears throat> so um I know you're all dying to find out how Pontifex dies today. Yeah. But hmm. before we do, Eka. Oh. When you open your eyes, you recognize your surroundings. You've previously spent some time against your will in this very building. A large house, homely, full of food and books that would be an entirely normal place if not for the fact that it was actually designed to be a fancy prison. You try to sit up on the living room's floor and you realize just how sore your body is. Your wrists and ankles are heavy with chains, and there are blurry figures all around you that you're trying your best to bring into focus. There's two of them standing right in front of you. Um, the closest one, you, after a few seconds, manage to recognize. During your previous interactions with Tarsho, you had noticed dirt under his fingernails and on his shoes, as if he had been plucked right out of his garden before being forced to translate for you. But right now he's even worse off, just covered in this grey mud up to his hips. And that's when you realize that you yourself are actually sitting down in half a foot of water. The house is flooding. Tarsho in Ezenfair speaks to you as soon as he realizes you're awake, and he says, simply, quickly, We need your help. Next to him, 
there's Kalbeck, whispering his demands into Tarsha's ear. He too is covered in that silvery mud that now completely conceals the original color of his robes. It makes him look older than he actually is. His uh, hair and beard just gray with dust, though his vox managed to shine through. His clothes are torn here, and, torn here and there, and his eyes are sunken and tired. Translating for him, Tarsho says, Make the rain stop. We will do anything. I cannot stop this water. Tarsha hesitates before translating, uh, as if putting into words what you're saying would uh, uh, make it real. But turns over, speaks, and then he and Kauvik just exchange this long, silent gaze. Tarsha turns back, he confirms with you, nothing, uh, nothing you can do. No. Nothing more than you. Kavik speaks again and leaves in a hurry. And Torsho gulps before translating his final remark to you. Then we evacuate. I can help. Um, Tarsha puts his hands together, he, um, his fingers are trembling and he's just sort of like twisting them and anxiously. Uh, he looks back, Kalvik being long gone, um, and he, he, he hesitates before saying, I, I tell them, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know if, uh, I go now. I come back soon. Good luck. Stay safe. Very awkwardly, uh, he leaves. Uh, the, the you're you're not left alone in, in the house, though. There are a few there are a few guards that are standing not outside of the house this time, but on both sides of the entrance in in the living room. They're with you. Uh, they are silent, but you hear something, not from them, but um, from behind you. A sound of chains uh, other than your own. You twist around a little bit, trying to uh, find the source of the noise, and you find that there is another prisoner uh, with you, currently adjusting his position. Uh, his diamond box shines beautiful in a candlelight as he looks up at you, and despite being visibly in pain, he smiles kindly at you. It looks like Potrokash is now being held in the same place his daughter was. I am sorry. He hmm. Ow! Sorry, I knocked over my bottle. <laughs> it's probably very loud. Um, making eye contact with you, he uh, there is this long uh, silence that follows, and he seems to be trying very hard to read your expression where he cannot uh, uh, understand your words. And you feel like this moment of, of connection, like he he kind of got it, or he, he he understood enough. I think Tekka will try to, like, hold up some of the water with his chained hands and, like, sort of hold it up to uh, him as, as, as a question, like, offering it out. Mm. Portuga just, just looks a little dejected. Are there windows? Can can we see outside from this angle? Uh, yes. The, from from where you are, 
uh, since the house is in the lowest part of Norashk, uh, from sitting down and looking up out of the windows, you would see the rain and also the buildings that are, that are connected by bridges further up ahead. And uh, there is... The, the rain reduces the visibility a little bit, uh, but there is lots and lots of movement outside. Uh, is there Can't anything you want to... Yeah? Uh, yeah, Can Tekka locate his equipment, his items? Like, have they taken that away, I imagine? They have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then I think Tekka will just try, try to take in everything in this room, like, see how the chains are connected, uh, see what the guards are up to. Mm -hmm. your, your wrists and, ankle, and ankles are, like... Um, they're manacled together, and then you're also chained to the wall. Uh, it looks like they have attached this metal hook to one of the walls that, that wasn't there before uh, the last time you were here. Uh, and it's sort of a little makeshift. Uh, the same applies to Potrakash. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Tekka would try to do anything immediately, but will like, yeah. Take all this in, try to think of what to do next. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, with that, we're going back to Pontifex. Back in the present day. This moment in time and space right here <clears throat> so the beauty of the crystal filled cavern of Narashk has been first drowned by the flood and now tarnished by the presence of an undead monster inches away from Pontifex's face Pontifex is so close to the dragon that he can see every detail of his form his scales colorless, patches of flesh missing, empty eye sockets glowing with a cold and unfeeling light. The dragon's jaw hangs open, revealing row upon row of razor-sharp teeth, some chipped or straight-up missing. Broken chains dangle from various parts of the dragon's body, hanging from his neck, and legs, and tattered wings. Uh, but they seem to have done little to ever contain him. In fact, last time you guys saw Cloud Fallen, uh, his wings were completely tied down to the sides of his body, but they seem to have uh, uh, broken free ever since. Uh, Cloud Fallen, the chained one, is free and back to his full strength, and now he has uh, set his empty eyes on Pontifex. Uh, Pip, you are, along with the others, uh, small distance away, uh, unaware of what's going on, the, until the moment you close your eyes and check what Squeak is up to uh, from your... I mean, uh, sorry, Squink. From your familiar's <laughs> location, you see Squink swimming freely and then turning back as he notices that Pontifex is falling behind. Uh, and that's when you see the old wizard face to face with a familiar enemy. Uh, what would you like to do? Does does Cloud Fallen appear to be hostile? Hmm. Well, let's have an insight check from Pip. And then Yay. I'll answer. <clears throat> Sixteen. Cloud of Fallen doesn't quite have the same body language that you would expect from other creatures, animals. Um, besides the fact that he's moving, he really just this, resembles this corpse, this shambling mound of bones and flesh. Uh, the mouth is open, not in a way that seems like he, he's growling or is about to bite Pontifex, but more like his jaw is just broken and it's, it's just how it hangs now all the time. 
Mm -hmm. um, but and so like you take a few seconds to even understand uh, Cloud Fallen's intentions, and then you see the dragon try to swipe at Pontifex, and suddenly becomes incredibly clear. Yeah, yeah, oh. he's, uh, he's he's hostile. <laughs> right. So uh, Squink is going to try and close the distance as quick as possible, and uh, um, a as fast as he can, try and wrap a tentacle around Cloud Fallen's leg. He wants Just to wrap to in. Just to touch him. Okay. Um, I think that would be quite easy to do because you have Squink has a swim speed and the Cloud Fallen doesn't. Uh, and he he's big compared to Squink. Uh, you can you can touch him. All right. Um, so upon wrapping a tentacle around one of the legs, uh, Pip, looking through Squink's uh, vision, is going to cast Bestow Curse through Squink. Uh, so out through uh, his tentacle um, is going to... Uh, well, we'll just try and see if this works. Cast Bestow Curse. Uh, he'll have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Wisdom is 14. Oh, that just fails. I mean, he just fails. Mm, okay. Um, so, Bestow Curse, I can choose a number of, like, standard options that it gives me. But it also says I can choose an alternative curse effect, but it should be no more powerful than those described above. So uh, you can tell me if this is if this is too powerful, and I can push it back a little bit. But this curse, I want Cloud Fallen to falsely believe that it is a living creature with bodily functions. What? I want oh, it to falsely God. believe <laughs> <laughs> okay. that it is alive. <laughs> let me let me read this. <laughs> so, I choose the nature of the curse from the following options. Set a DM's option. You may choose an alternative curse effect, and no more powerful than those described above. So, the offered options are. Um, advantage exactly. on ability checks and such uh, disadvantage attack rules against you wisdom saving throw at the start of each turn so waste an action doing and waste a turn doing nothing ah okay we just started and you're already throwing me for a loop, but I, I like <laughs> what you're doing. Um, how does Pip think of that? Uh, well, Pip sees that it is, a, it is a poor little dead creature underwater and uh, knows that most things can't do that <laughs> if they are alive. You messed up a little child. Okay, <laughs> let's go with it. I want to put the fear of death into this dead <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's just interesting because of like how... Uh, how do I put this without spoilers? So if I, of how Cloud Fallen's mind works. Um, so Squink... Touches Cloud Fallen, and uh, um, through Pip attempting to to cast a spell from a great distance uh, through this this uh, non physical bond between the two of them, uh, Squink has to like just wrap uh, his entire body as much as he can around this this uh, uh, the dragon's ankle, um, and sort of like uh, uh, as if being uh, an animal that's just attempting to sting. I kind of like how he does with his uh, tail, usually. Um, 
it's almost as if uh, Squink's touch poisons Cloud Fallen. Um, and before Pontifex's eyes, as the dragon was moving forward and starting to kind of, kind of in slow motion, uh, swipe at the wizard who himself, uh, weighted down by his armor, is also just running back in in slow motion. Uh, the the dragon slows down, pauses, and then visibly freaks out. What I was telling you earlier about how a cloud of fallen doesn't quite have the same body language that you'd expect from any other creature, it's like you're fixing that all of a sudden. And uh, the first emotion that this creature experiences in his entire existence up until now is terror. And begins to uh, part swim, part uh, almost like trying to fly through the water with it, with his tattered wings, just go straight upward towards those openings at the top of the cave uh, that it rained through originally. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put Squeak a bottle in a beer. <laughs> looks over to Pontifex and just goes, "You got ten minutes." <laughs> uh, hmm. From your from your previous trip, what you guys were trying to do was to get uh, go see that uh, other entrance into the cave system that was far behind the skull, uh, and just get into it will take more than ten minutes. So, especially with Pontifex's speed being even lower than usual, so all he can do is head back. Is that is that fine with everybody? Like reunite with the party, basically. Yeah. yeah. No arguments here. I think Squeak will take time to look around, though. Squeak uh, is fast. Yes. Yeah. First priority is is any sign of Tekka. Okay. Squeak straight into this little uh, this house, uh, the one they used to uh, imprison him and another tiefling. Uh, it is empty. I, he mm, roll an investigation check for for with uh, Squink's uh, stats. Okay, I think that's just nothing. Twelve. Okay, just no sign of anyone having been left in here. All right. Uh, Squink will then check out like. The the place where the mothers ha hung out, hung, <laughs> yes. hanged. They 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 have the room <laughs> building that you that you've seen them like enter and exit, uh, which would be this one over here. Uh so he'll he'll swim up. Uh now, now that the danger is temporarily gone, let me just uh, bring back. Uh, oop, yeah. Um, swimming past this large central platform where the, the huge orange crystal used to be and uh, now isn't there anymore. Uh, Squink can go inside this house and see that uh, there's obviously some amount of chaos that uh, um, not, not just the kind that has been brought by the flood and you know there's items around some kind of floating um some furniture that is beginning to to topple over and sort of be suspended diagonally, but there is uh, the obvious signs of people having willingly left, having packed their things and taken off. Hmm. Interesting. I think one more place Squink would look is where we first met the priest, uh, Kavik. Which was, uh, um, where the cemetery is. I believe so. Okay, past the place where the, the Ezen used to live. Okay. Trying to get a sense of, of where people may have gone and if there's anything anything interesting that was left behind he may pick those up 
or whatever he can carry, which probably isn't that much. Okay. Um, on the way to the um, the, the uh, it's a cemetery. <laughs> Uh, on the way there, he would pass through this area, uh, and he would notice that some of the flowers uh, in this garden have been rearranged uh, to form an arrow that points almost exactly in the direction that the squeak is heading, um, which is... The, the cemetery is north, the, north, the arrow points a little bit more northeast. Um, it's quite big, um, so visible enough for him the moment he comes towards this section of the town. Hmm. Follow that arrow. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll... He'll begin swimming that way, and there would come a moment where five minutes would have passed uh, compared to the, the casting of the spell, and I just need to know how far... Like, if he wants to keep going. He'll keep going, because Pip can always snap him back if something goes wrong. Okay. Um, so Squeak is on a journey. Uh, it's going to be a little while. Pontifex would make it back to the others before Squeak finds what he's looking for. Pontifex returns to just Pip in, like, this cataconic, catatonic state, leaning against the wall. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, he, he doesn't say anything. Mm. Um, just sits there silently and will for a while, it sounds yeah. like. The, the, the rest of the party just saw people like stop paying attention to any of their conversations. And um, I don't recall if, if Virion has seen Pip do this before, but the rest of you are familiar with it and have seen, long since stopped freaking out uh, about it. Um... Right now, after in the time during after Pontifex left, uh, that's when Freda uh, brings out brings up something that she didn't think was particularly worth mentioning. Uh, there were many other things you guys have talked about ever since you you were reunited, but that's when she begins to speak of the days when, for the first time ever since she and Devamia have got have reached dustfall, uh, she has seen rain. And it wasn't quite at her location, it was further up, and it was on a, a, around a particular section of land. And she didn't explore it too much, as she was trying to mainly stay put. Um, and because of that rain, she has drawn the conclusion that uh, perhaps you guys are a bit closer to the coastline than uh, originally thought. And she's just um, mentioning that, and Devami is explaining the reason why rain is actually uh, quite... Quite an important thing to know that it happened in, in Dust Fall recently because of this and this reason. And as they're like um, explaining to each other what's, what's going on, then Pontifex arrive and you're all reunited. Um, so, what now? Has Pontifex told us everything? Can we assume that? Did we say that? And he, he would, surely. Alright. Pip back out of stream state. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Is Pip back from looking through Squink's eyes? No. Ah. Uh, mm. un unless he wants to, but like this... Squeak is going to be gone for a while. So do we just wait till we find a sign of where they are? Is that or we start wandering aimlessly? That probably won't go well. I suppose if we have what might be a trail, it's wisest to at least see where it ends up. And if we do need to find another way in, we at least know where we're going. All right. So we let Squeak do his thing and wait till we find something. I think so. Okay. 
Um, after about uh, 30 minutes of swimming, uh, Squink would find uh, uh, that the, the terrain, like the, the bottom of this now flooded cave, uh, is uh, sloped diagonally upward and more and more up until he finds this exit to the surface. Uh, he comes up from out of the water and then uh, if he takes on his imp form again, he can fly upward and be uh, entirely out of the cave system and being in a section of, uh, of dustfall. Um, would you roll a 12? Um, by now, there wouldn't really be much uh, in that Squeak can see in terms of uh, a trail to follow. Um, but... I'll take a history check from mm -hmm. Squeak and from Pip. Okay. Both of them with their respective stat blocks. <laughs> okay. Uh, here is Squeak's. Here is Pip's. Okay. For both of them, the direction feels meaningful, but uh, it's not quite clicking. At the end of the water, uh, Squink will turn back into imp form, just fly straight up like 200 feet and just take a 360 look around. Okay. Dustfall being dustfall, um, everything... Looks kind of samey, empty, just gray landscape without m very many um, landmarks. And the the exit of the cave that Squeak just took is also similarly in this, uh, um, in this bit of uh, gently sloped land that, that, that would be so difficult to, to just accidentally stumble upon. Um, and everything is... The the, ter the terrain looks the same, but Squeak would have seen that it seems to have... Uh, there is signs here that it rained in this area, and there's still parts where there's this gray mud that has been formed between the water and the dust. But for the most part, it's starting to dry back up again. Uh, so... It, while it doesn't have an exact idea of where he is, he does have a reasonable idea of where he's compared to the group uh, in terms of how far to travel and in what direction. Uh, and that, that's a, really all he can put together. Okay. Um, Squeak is going to stay put, but Pip's going to snap back um, and look around at the others. Uh, his eyes sort of coming back into focus um, and he has this concerned expression on his face and he reaches up and uh, pulls a lock of hair off of his head and quickly wraps it around a colorful stone before handing it over to Brooke and then Brooke you hear I think I may have found the exit that they went out of that's good Squeak's still there. It's it's in that direction. Pip just sort of vaguely points where he thinks it is. Mm -hmm. Towards one of the walls of the cave. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're just gone there. Okay. I'll forward the information to the others. We have at least the place where they went. It sounds like that's the only trail we have to follow, so might as well take a look there. Um, if they went anywhere, I'm sure they didn't make it that far. It hasn't been that long. That many people are bound to leave some sort of trail. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Okay, is everyone ready? as I could ever be. Alright. 
Okay. Do you leave the cave back the way you came from? Uh... Unless there's... I don't think there's another option unless we want to go swimming. Mm -hmm. And I feel all things considered, that might not be the wisest decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back the way I came. The back the way we came, I think. Okay. Back out, uh, finding the place where, um, where Freda and your horses had been waiting for you for about a week. Uh, you return outside. If I remember correctly, it was nighttime by now. Because uh, I, be I, I believe you found Freda around sunset, and there were there was there was talks about taking a long rest, but you decided to dig up the cave and go in mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, so, you want to pursue? Do you want to rest? I think rest makes sense if it's already dark. Like it's going to be that's going to make it tough to find anything, right? Yeah, and we don't know how far they are, so rather get there in the daylight, safe and probably quicker than run into any more dangers here in the night. I think. If we're resting, Virian would want to, if everyone else is okay with it, see if she can go scout around and see if she can figure out where Squeak ended up. So she doesn't have to rest for quite as long. Do you have any way to let us know if you're in danger? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Squeak would... Sounds give. like a good idea. <laughs> Squeak would give to you the um, the token that he had given Brooke, just sort of hmm. like pat Brooke and do the give it here motion. <laughs> oh yeah, gives it, and then would hold it out to Virian. She'll take it. Hi. Hello. I don't think I'll ever get used to this. No one does. Um, you won't be able to talk back to me with that, but I will check in in, um, in a few hours. If I'm not back in, I won't go too far. If I'm not back in three or four hours, then something bad definitely happened. Or if you hear gunshots, then something bad also definitely happened. If you do make it to Squeak, I'll be able to know. Okay. I just... Figure if I can get a head start, maybe find a good path to go, figure out where exactly we're going. It'll give us an edge in the morning. Yeah. I won't, I won't be gone too long. And if things seem dodgy, I'll be back. All Thank right. You. Oh. That's fine. I'll, I'll be back. Every, like, 15 or so minutes, you hear Pip say something to you that's just a little stupid, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just like, Duchess's hooves are getting dirty. I'm going to clean them, okay? <laughs> oh. So I can't respond at all, just hear it. Yeah, yep. run it by me one more time. Yeah. What, can, what, can Pip, uh, what can Pip perceive with it? Uh, Pip can perceive nothing with it unless he he uses an action to look through it but at that point it like destroys itself so he's not doing that yet um but as long as virian's within 10 miles of it uh he can send a telepathic message to her the miles okay And Viren is leaving right away before before taking um Yeah, she's still good. So she's willing to go out for seven two hours out, two hours back. 
is kind of where where she's at with how far she's willing to scout. Hi. Oh, you're definitely not going any further than, than 10 miles. 10 miles. Yeah, the, the goal is just to see if she can find a path to meet up with where Squeak is. All right. Then uh, everybody else sets up the tower, um, which uh, Freda seems to be quite happy to be to be resting in instead of a little drafty makeshift hut. Um, and the horses are happy to be back with people they, uh, they know. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys are preparing to rest while, uh, well, ba <laughs> Valia, <laughs> well, Virion, <laughs> Ron Carter, uh, well, Virion takes off. Virion, uh, roll a stealth, uh, not stealth, survival check uh, with advantage because you have a general direction to go. Okay. I'm good at these. I need to check something on your card sheet. Ooh. Cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's... I'm worried now. When the DM says don't worry about it, that's... <laughs> Code of word for... Passive perception again. <laughs> it was, uh, is there, uh, I was checking your passive something else, actually, and I will tell you that your passive stealth is higher than what I'm checking. So... Ooh. You are the first one to notice. You feel like you're heading roughly in the right direction, uh, at least wherever it is that uh, Pip was uh, pointing towards earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're heading off to the uh, to the northeast, like further north than the direction you, that you guys just came from, which was more east specifically. Um, and by the time this happens, you have yet to find, like, a trail or to find Squeak, but you do uh, see movement. Uh, partially thanks to your to your dark vision, uh, partially you just happen to be on, like, a higher part of terrain compared to, to this. Uh, and, like, you, uh, you, you climb up and you look around, and then you back away and you kneel down and you double check what you just saw um just more uh, carefully and quietly and sure enough um off in the distance not not very far compared to where you are just further down like vertically uh is a dragon and uh, um the, this this dragon is moving around in this weird kind of shambling sort of uh, um uh, walking uh, doesn't seem to be flying and doesn't seem capable of flight there's uh, it, its wings are broken and tattered and there's chains that are just dangling from his body but aren't really tied to anything um Pontifex described it is to you earlier it, it seems that there is an undead dragon on the surface that is um, pretty much halfway between you and squeak uh, and uh -huh. you have spotted him uh, far before he seems to, have, to even have a chance of uh, either hearing or, or seeing or smelling you out. Uh, we so. are we are out of there. We're going back. Not much about that alone. <laughs> Just turning around and heading back. Yeah, like we're not we're not gonna chance it with that thing. Okay. Solo. Um uh, do, 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 do. I guess that's. Um, does this happen? Nope. All right. Make it back. All right. Uh, the others are probably most of them sleeping. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you guys set up like a, a a watch like you usually do, so there might be one person awake. Let, let's say it's Brooke. By the time that uh, Vivian returns. I think she would, when she get back, she would just immediately find whoever was awake and just uh, this uh, trouble that I don't think we were quite expecting that um, dragon you are, that you did or did not defeat is wandering around regardless. <sighs> is there a way around? Or to avoid him? 
I mean, there's... Arguably, we could take a wide berth, but... I don't know where exactly it's wandering. I didn't want to risk going around it by myself if, in case it would get me pinned. What is the area looking like? Is it easy to stay hidden? So I, mean, I, was able, I was able to. Uh, I imagine with a little preparation and just treading cautiously, it would be possible. He didn't seem to see me, but we might not be able to guarantee it, especially with a large entourage. So I think we have like two choices then. Either we try to sneak, right? Or we make, I don't know, we try to bait it somewhere else and then go forward while it's gone or distract it. I mean, I suppose either of those, I think it depends on how much time you're willing to spend on it. Because who knows how wide it's going to wander, how far it's, I suppose its territory spreads. If we want to sneak past it, I'm sure that will be the quicker route. If we want to avoid it, we may have to go pretty far. So the quicker route, I assume? Quicker okay. route give them less of a chance to keep moving and keep moving to a point where we can no longer track them. Mm -hmm. We need something then that could lure it away. If it's receptive to sounds or anything like that, maybe it would go there and we can use that. I mean, you face this thing. I have only seen it this one time now. You know its uh, actions and reactions and senses better than I do. If you think that might work, it might be worth those shots just to catch its attention for long enough to slip by. Windsor. I don't remember if it was deaf or anything, right? You don't remember <laughs> like if it what? Was, the dragon was never deaf, right? Deaf. Mm. Or did it that ever come up? I do not recall a specific instance of it like coming up, but mm. um, I'd say that you have no reason to believe that it is. Um, if you recall, when when first you guys were sort of like trying to run away from something when you were in the cave, uh, which that something eventually turning out to be Cloud Fallen. Uh, and you could feel like he, his breath on your neck. He were right at the back of the line when you were running off. And you feel like the dragon was probably chasing you by by sound uh, at that particular moment. So you would exclude the possibility that he's deaf. Mm, all right. So let's try... Uh, do we wake the others up? Or let them rest? Let them rest. Uh, we'll need to be in that form in the morning. Alright, then if you have any ideas on how to distract that thing, let us gather it tomorrow. I'll think on it while I rest. Yeah, and until then, rest. Of course. I mean, I'll be around if you need me. I'm not the best conversationalist while I'm meditating, but I can still respond. <laughs> All right. She'll nod and then go find a place to settle in to get her four hours in. I was saying Gibrook would just wait out the rest of his shift. Staying awake, just trying to think of something to come up with till he wakes the next person. Okay. Boop. All right. 
I don't, I'm not going to need your exact uh, shifts today because your night is going to be uninterrupted. Uh, so go ahead and take your long rest. Uh -huh. and once you're all done, I'm clicking the button for Pontifex. Click, click. Um, is a squeak staying out of there the entire night, Pip? Yep. Okay. I'm resting on like a petrified tree or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, it's a tree. Cute yeah. little blue squeak probably kind of sticks out a little bit in this gray landscape, but hey, you know how rats take like dirt baths. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. He could, he could totally cover himself in dust if he wanted to. I think that's I chinchillas. I feel like he would like it. No? <laughs> I saw it's owls. <laughs> okay. Pip, you have a nice dreamless sleep. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's relevant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> um, so, Pip is in the kitchen. Uh, he's he's made some snacks for everybody. Um, they look dubious at best. <laughs> uh, and he's also laid out a bunch of stones on the countertop. Um and has sprinkled some flour over them and is chanting some sort of weird magic uh, while you all eat, which is a little disconcerting, um, but is casting augury and a asking the stones uh, if, that, if they uh, continue in the direction... Hmm. The plan is we continue in the direction that Virian is going in order to find Tekka. Seeing what the stones say about that. Okay. You watch the rocks roll around like marbles, animated by their own little will. Um, and as they move and they flip over and rearrange themselves in various patterns that they, they would mean nothing to anyone except to you. Uh, the, the message, the, uh, the fate that is revealed uh, to your eyes and eyes alone is uh, both wheel and woe. Hmm. Pip quietly uh, plucks the stones off of the table, wipes them off on his shirt, and starts putting them back in his pouch. And elaborates no further. <laughs> refuses to elaborate. <laughs> you know what? Not the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I look when forward I look to forward. The day. Oh, yeah. oh! <laughs> when we Same see hat. the weirdest thing, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, as we're kind of sitting around, I think just kind of shaking that situation off. Virian will just. I was thinking a bit overnight. Um, can you think of any uh, skill set that might be useful? I can. Think a little bit and get, get better at one of them. Uh, thinking possibly if, uh, if there's any sort of tools that might come in use that no one else would normally use. Ape is holding up a knife. What do you have there? <laughs> a <Another> knife! <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 I think I'm 
might be my favorite video on the internet. <laughs> it's so good. Basically, I can swap one of my tool proficiencies, so if anyone can think of anything that would be particularly useful, I'll grab it. I can't think of anything right now. Okay. <laughs> navigators? I, I have navigators already. Oh, of course you do. I'm gonna, I'll Fun grab fact, I would tools. recommend the proficiency with a dragon chess set. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, <true. laughs> I usually have that, but they special. Oh, like, normally you do? I mean, that's what I defaulted to, but I can swap two of my, my tool proficiencies every time I rest. Right, no, help. it's just... I, I, I'm I, just sad that it turns out that Viren has something in common with Pontifex that he'd be delighted about, and he's not here to comment on it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe if he asked her about it instead of calling her fish lady all the time, he'd know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I'm going to grab grab mason's tools because um sounds like it might be useful for something or other around it seems so. yeah yeah and they'll figure out a better way to swap this on my character sheet rather than just renaming what's already on there it's fine whoops all right. Any additional preparations before you set off? Mm -hmm. Uh, Devamia might speak up. Ah, uh, well, we could scout ahead with Murder Claw. Maybe like divert that dragon's attention for a while if you need to get set up in a good position. The only thing I worry about, I mean, it didn't look like it could fly, um, but if you do attract his attention and we can't get to you, that could also be bad. Yeah. Fair point. I'm not saying it's not the a good idea to keep in the back pocket, but I don't think that should be our first go. Wait. Don't we have, like, 50 machines with us who can do the job for us? You have one, two, three, four, five, six left. Um, I suppose if you're all done with the cave, the, the me giant mechanical snake that was keeping it open could rejoin you. So, seven. Get some of the machines to attack it and draw it away. And then while they're fighting, leave. That could work. Actually sounds like a pretty good plan. And Thank you. Sacrifice anything. Might as well be the machines. <laughs> Your constructs are just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm <laughs> <just> hurt. <laughs> and worst case if it does notice us. What's the uh, the worst case scenario plan? The if we're spotted and we need to either fight or flee, what do we do? Uh, we kill it, and Good. then we need to keep it down, huh? Leave, sacrifice another one of our machines. <laughs> keep punching <laughs> on it. <laughs> All we run. Oh my god. Pip, Pip dangles a stone in front of Virian. She'll take it. If we can get to it without it seeing, I might be able to get it on our side for a bit. That could work too. But I think if we can seek past it, no harm, no foul is our best plan. But avoiding a fight is probably for the best, especially if we're trying to approach a large group of people unnoticed, depending how close they are, 
fighting a dragon is probably about the number one thing to get their attention. Maybe sneak first. If it's, if it notices us, it can make friends with it, I suppose. And if that doesn't work, we fight. Yeah, send the machines in from a different way first, I'd say. I don't know. Yeah, just get its attention away from us for just a few minutes. That's probably all we need. All right. How do we communicate this to the machines? But you could talk to them. Oh. I mean, I just assumed you have been. They've been just kind of following us around. Yeah, they have. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was you, was it? Pip, you're not the one telling them what to do. No, I think Orm told us what. Just oh? gave them the command. I'll go to one of the machines. <laughs> yeah, Brooke, you stand up to it. It's like enormous metal snake. All right. <clears throat> if you can hear me. You will approach the dragon from a different side, attack it, and then lure it away while we leave. All right? Go. D you told him to go right now? Yeah. Okay. Huh? The machines just return this completely neutral and emotionless stare. And then the snake begins to slither away. The other snake oh. follows. Oh. The Are we ready to go? Albert and the crabs. I hope so. Take off. All right, we better be ready. Yeah. Mechanical <laughs> ravens really way ahead of you. Wait, some of you, like, some of you have to stay with us in case you find the bigger group. So not all of you. <laughs> <laughs> The fastest <laughs> runner. <laughs> He's just shaking his head. You weren't the commander, were you? Were you? Uh, yeah. We, we, we. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was in the. It's good first shot. I'll give you some pointers later. I, I've always been better at following what. Which machines do you want to stay with you, and which ones are taking off? Mm -hmm. They're here on the table. Just uh, I guess we need one that can take a little bit of the the wrath of the dragon and some faster and one faster ones. The the stronger so ones physically would be the snakes and the owl bear. All right, what do you think of one snake and one raven? To stay, to with, stay you? with us? Commander, please help. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke, you can't tell, but you're just like falling back on your own, on your, on your old habits. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose for the sake of stealth, how loud are these things? Are they pretty loud or are they pretty quiet? Loud? Um... Well, here's the thing. They started out pretty quiet, but the the tracking through dust falls seems to have like worn away uh, at the, at their mechanisms, and there's dust like covering them and inside of them. And now, when they move, most of them they, they kind of screech a little bit. Not the quietest thing. Maybe we should only take the ones that we can carry with us, just so they don't have to make this awful noise because. If I was an undead dragon looking for things to, to attack, the, the sound is probably number one. Probably the same for the group. Alright, so the birds and the crabs. Um, the Stay crabs are like person-sized, no. if, oh. if that was your concern. 
impaired. Where are you? You know, like that. Oops. I'm on computer. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. I think we could potentially need a raven in the in the in the later things. If anything, if we have the machines either go off ahead or trail behind us, they don't have to go too far, and that way if they do make noise, it won't be directed on top of us. Yeah. So if we All send right. maybe one of the snakes and uh, the owl bear to go in from one direction, the other the crabs and the other snake can tag along with us at a distance, and we can bring the ravens. Without right. them making too much noise. Okay. So all bear and snake distract, and the rest follows us. Sounds the good. Owl bear and the snakes will be ahead and will be distracting the dragon, and the others go with you. No, I think one snake. One snake. Yeah, one snake. Okay. But keeping them probably, I don't know, like what? 40, 50 feet ahead or behind us. Probably ahead. Or actually, probably behind. Yeah, at first behind. Yeah. At least until we pass the dragon. Enough where if they right. make noise, they are the ones that get zeroed in on, not us. Yeah. All good to go? Think so. Think so. Let's hope. Then, <laughs> you let uh, Virin take the lead and uh, take the same path that she took last time. Uh, ahead of you, uh, under the instructions and directions of Virin, one giant snake and one owl bear. The owl bear, no, the one. Um, will be ahead of you, like uh, far enough ahead that you wouldn't really be able to see where they are anymore. Uh, okay. With all that, since I need to set up a few things, I, I'm going to call an early break. All right. Oh, good. Uh, and I'm going to kindly ask that before any of you leave your seat, uh, and go get some water or whatever that you, you you press. Actually, you don't have to do it. I can do it myself, I think. Boop. Like that. I'm hey! blind! Whoa! You can't see anything anymore. Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> if you're working on the table, do not uh, do not unblind yourselves uh, <laughs> during the break. Right. And whatever you do, you. don't let her move us to a secondary location. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, then I'll see you. Uh, I might need she 15 just minutes. Says, I'd like you to join this 15? new Discord server. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this is right. Rock formation in black looks like a black duck heading it out. Does. Of it does a really angry <laughs> black duck. <laughs> <laughs> no, what have you done? <laughs> this is ruined now. <laughs> Jory's oh, honest. Oh no! I will never unsee it now! <laughs> this is why people can't go sailing in the Sea of Ladaria. This giant angry <laughs> dog. This. this guy Dead. right here. Dad! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, we found him. It's Squack. <laughs> <laughs> campaign guys, GG. Game over. <laughs> Let me write it down in my notes for the next session somewhere. <laughs> oh, it's Chloe's dad. <laughs> you don't know fear until you hear my dad's horrible death quack. <laughs> Canon? Canon? <laughs> I mean, there would be one of those like crazy things like, oh, did 
the villain was hiding in the main screen of the campaign this whole time, right, under your nose? <laughs> <laughs> a duck! Is this a frog? <laughs> you got it! <laughs> you, you see the frogs in the in the rush? I had hated a bunch of frogs the first time I, I made a map. I saw a lizard. But... Yeah. I know that someone circled the frogs. Yeah, I did. There were more than four, but I couldn't remember what the others were. I always wondered if you guys had seen them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, so, put some frogs around. Frog is a snail. That's what happens if you do undo the blindfold too early. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> there's a snail. <laughs> My art's done. <laughs> well, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is that if I, if I swap the map, I'll, I'll race the job and survive. No! I'll race my own so you don't have to feel bad about it. <laughs> I will leave my. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> leave this specifically. Just this. <laughs> it's staring into my soul. This is the expression of the snake when Brooke was talking to it. <laughs> it is fine. <laughs> it's supposed to be an S, but <laughs> Sid is fine. <laughs> Sid, are you fine? I'm fine. <laughs> are you happy now? <laughs> Always. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Very, 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 very well. Beep, boop, beep. And boop, boop. You thought I had everything ready during the break? You thought wrong! <laughs> Still need to roll these dice. <clears throat> well, I'm sure you can see all of the faces on this map, though, right? Sure, right? <laughs> yes, there are many faces. <laughs> Got one here. I'm getting Whoa, started. I went a little far over there. We got one here. Yep, yep. <laughs> a little sad face right there. A little ghost face with a nose in the side of his mouth here. Yep. Alright, anyway. Right. Wait, is this a tiny version of this? Whoa. That. Yeah, this is also a duck, so confirmed. <laughs> Ladaria <laughs> is a duck, I just all of it. <clears throat> okay, so you guys are uh, once again trudging through the dry expanse of Dustfall. Your feet kicking up clouds of dust with every step ah pip you have uh, uh, you find uh, like as soon as you guys hit the road that uh, <clears throat> uh duchess is gently so sort of, like pushing against your back with her head like getting your attention <laughs> what and then what's going on with with her chin up she just turns her head a little bit, like looking back towards her back and then towards you. Is there... Is there something behind us? She waits for you to get it. And then... She just sighs. His horse sighs and says, Just... Ah, get on my back. Oh! Okay. Um, You're gonna have to... Lean down, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm short. And she just bends her front legs. I'm so weak. <laughs> <laughs> Low strength score. Ugh. 
After about two minutes, he's he's on there. <laughs> two minutes. Okay. Uh, and not having to worry about walking your free to occasionally just check through Squeak, what Squeak is up to. And <clears throat> Squeak appears to be bored out of his mind and making little piles of rocks. These little towers of rocks. Pip, every hour you make me wake. Wait, I destroy another rock. <laughs> 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 No, it's horrible. He just but doesn't that just make more rocks? <laughs> but, oh, I guess that's how they reproduce. <gasps> <laughs> uh, Pontifex also possibly back uh, on for room. Um, the unless. At any point, you spe uh, Devami specifically wants to ride on Murder Claw. Murder Claw is quite happy to just be hopping behind the two of you. Uh, it's it's very dusty. He seems a little uncomfortable with flight in here. Uh, by the time you have roughly reached the area where Viren yesterday night you found uh, an undead dragon, um, you see the uh, the the uh, glinting of metal uh, where the giant snake and the uh, mechanical owlbear have gotten before you have, uh, and the two machines are just there unharmed and uh, not in the company of a dragon. Alright. I guess that we got prob lucky. That's probably good. Or really bad. We should keep going. We follow her? Uh, yeah, you, 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 you climb down the little... Uh, this level where the, the machines have gotten ahead of you uh, and then you continue in a general direction where Squeak should be but uh, right away you notice that there is like these uh, um, marks on the ground where uh, something very big and, and dragon shape appears to have been uh, dragging himself uh, and it's going roughly in the direction that you are headed as well Looks like we're going to have company no matter what. Uh, we should get going. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't get to wherever we're trying to get to first. And we should just go. We should probably move a little bit quicker. All right. All right. I'll take a survival check from whoever is leading. Yeah, unfortunately, I think if nobody... Uh, Volunteers to lead, Virion is going to keep leading. And yeah. she's great at this. Do it. Do, Do it. it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Put it to the counter. On the counter. Yeah. Number two. Turn my camera around. Number Your counter is sort of like TV to 20. I need to be upside yeah. down. All right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, well, with a with a natural twenty, um, uh, Virion, uh, all you have as a direction was the one time underground when Pip pointed with his finger, uh, and you had to like just think about where you were underground uh, and compare it to the surface and which cardinal direction it would correspond to, and just think of all the twists and turns that you had gone through uh but you feel like you have like a very very accurate uh idea not just of uh, the where pip had pointed but also where S squeak has like currently ended up and stopped um so continuing <clears throat> follow, uh, following uh, your sense of direction so you notice that this a trail that Cloud of Fallen has fallen has left behind uh, eventually is starting to curve away from where you are headed. Uh, the you have let the owlbear and the snake uh, go 
ahead of you once again um, under your directions and uh, uh, Squeak would eventually be joined by uh, the two of them first and then eventually the rest of the party second. He's going to play dead. Squeak? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to see if anyone cares. <laughs> okay. While Squeak is playing dead, I want the Vamia, Rook, and I'll roll for Pontifex uh, um, to roll also a survival check, specifically them. All right. I guess I made it history earlier. That's no, fine. Pontifex plus eight. Fifteen. Uh so for Brooke, um you don't even notice that that the squeak is playing dead because you're, you're you're just trying to look around at this spot that the squeak has found. Um and something is beginning to feel a little familiar. And you realize actually now that you think about it, now that you're here and looking around, it's hard to tell because of just how much the landscape just looks the same everywhere you go. But it feels like you have walked through here once. Ah. Uh, a week ago, uh, when you had first reached the the cave, you had arrived like from from this general direction, and then headed south. Uh, so while you haven't been retracing your steps just now, um, now you are at a spot that you recognize. Ooh, I think we've been here before. I'll look around. Do I see any marks for where people could have gone towards? Um, you would, yes. Uh, Virim would be able to notice them pretty quickly as well. Uh, things that that Squeak had had missed. Uh, the the when he had been checking, uh, visibility is a little better this morning. Uh, there's, there's less wind, less dust being kicked up, and uh, um, people have walked through here somewhat recently. A lot of uh, a lot of the trail uh, has already been covered up and blown off, but uh, large crowds have definitely moved through here. All right. I think we have a trail. <laughs> Everyone ready to move on? I think so. Um, uh, Pip is squeak all right. He hasn't moved yet. After after Brooke says, I think there's a trail, uh, squeak immediately perks up and goes, Wait, what? What? <laughs> I've been here for days and I didn't see a trail. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's, actually, you... It's, very, it's very obvious. It's right here. What? Oh! Where'd that come from? That was not here uh, a day ago. Mm -mm. Oh, did anyone go past you? They must have been <laughs> invisible. <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye out for that, huh? Clearly your eagle eyes are, are very sharp. Yeah. Brooke gives him a braced eyebrow. All right. Don't, don't worry, I'm sure you did your best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Follow the trail. Okay. Say onward. Off you go. Uh, during, uh, I'm just skipping your rows. Uh, during the, cur the course of the day, as you're traveling northeast, it becomes more and more apparent for each of you, minus Virion. Uh, that you are traveling back the exact route that you had taken from Stilling Dread to the cave that eventually led to Narashk. Uh, and so having been here before already, you begin to just recognize, even if there is no proper landmarks, it's more like, oh, that group of petrified trees over there, and oh, this is... Uh, I remember that particular rock that 
it was so interested in the first time around. Uh, and while your day of travel is ultimately, um, for the most part, uneventful, um, just coming across the occasional animal that leaves you alone, um, it's towards sunset uh, that the trail that you've been following is joined back by the one left by Cloudfallen, both headed in the same direction. <sighs> I guess what we feared is true, huh? I don't particularly like the look of this. I mean, he could have... It could easily split off again, but... I mean, there's not much around here. Depending on how... If he was hunting, if he was... Just wandering. I know it's getting late, but... Regardless, I think it might be worth it to keep pushing on... Tonight. Whether it's to catch up with... Dragon or... The rest of everyone else. If we keep stopping to rest, we'll never catch up with them if they are continuously moving. You're right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will probably lose them. You know, it's going to be a hard day tomorrow without a proper rest, but I, I just think it's best if we push on tonight. Is that okay with everyone else? Look at Pip. Mm -hmm. Let's go. We push on. All right. Pushing on through the night with visibility now much lower, of course, without sunlight, but with the uh, added advantage of uh, Having already seen this particular part of the landscape before, you you keep moving forward. Um, the horses are quite unhappy with this, and it comes a moment where Duchess is done with you riding on her pip. Um, and uh, um, but otherwise, they they keep going, and with you guys pushing through the night and not stopping, uh, t -t 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 this many, this many. It is uh, approximately... Yeah, you shouldn't be more than maybe two or three hours uh, before dawn uh, by the time you hear it. Uh, long before you see cloud fall and you hear the sound of a roaring dragon uh, and uh, the, the sound of something loud slamming against the stone. Um, this time you are lower down compared to the noises you're hearing. Uh, so directly up ahead of you there's just this dune of, of dust. Uh, how, do we, how do you want to approach? So it's... We're hearing like... Mm -hmm. Like, above us elevation-wise? Yeah. Dragon sounds? Yeah, like, uh, ahead of you and up the hill. <clears throat> Not above your heads. Yeah. Okay. I don't approach particularly carefully. like the sound of that, but... We can always approach carefully, check it out. I, I agree, um... The fact that we hadn't heard it until now, I'm worried that it found something. Okay. I'll move forwards and as stealthily as possible. Likewise. I'll take stealth the rules then. You keep the machines um, like behind you. To avoid yeah, noise. a little bit of yeah, and a little bit of distance. Oh, jeez. Goodness. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Who rolled to 20 and who rolled to 1? Pip was the 20, Squeak was the 1. <laughs> what, what happened to Squeak? Just complaining. 
Yeah. <laughs> Squeak is tired. <laughs> He it, some death like, very loudly. A few days ago, there was this one brief moment where he thought he was free, and he wasn't, and it's just really been dragging the mood down. He keeps being <laughs> like, sent off on these dangerous missions, and uh, was nearly eaten by a dragon already a couple of times, and yes, he's just voicing out all of his annoyances at this moment, not realizing what's going on. My father will um. hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip makes it up the uh, the hill with Virion almost right away. Uh, the two of you looking down and seeing that the, uh, where, where the hill sort of like flattens out for a while and uh, the terrain is now quite uh, even. Uh, all that there is are these petrified trees and, petri and just large rocks dotting the landscape. Uh, and you are... Um, you watch Cloudfallen, the undead dragon, slamming this l elephant way bigger than, than he is, just against these rocks. And you can you can hear bones snapping, uh, and this large elephant no longer moving. Um, and and Cloudfallen, instead of uh, instead of eating what he had just hunted he what he what he has just hunted down um he pauses examines the body and begins to leave that's horrible <clears throat> and as the others are catching up and uh, uh squeak is on his little rant and the brook you, you trip over a rock uh, um, those of you on top of uh, uh, of this uh, dune uh, see Cloud Fallen stop and begin to turn back. Uh oh. I think seeing that Viren would probably grab Hip and just like try to get out of sight. Push his hand down. What? Yeah, just and like motion behind him, just like, you know, with a kill sign, just like, uh-uh-uh, don't stay back. <laughs> if I see that, I would do the same. <laughs> she means they're ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like, <clears throat> yes, you, you were like, uh, uh, basically directly behind them. Uh, and you guys keep your head down, and you can hear in the dust that you see heavy footsteps and the dragging of the chains <clears throat> as a, a cloud fallen is approaching your location. How far away are the machines? Uh, you, you just left them at the base of the dune, so maybe like 30 feet back. God. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you, you want him to go ahead? <laughs> wants him to move away over no 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 over to us i'm assuming he, i'm assuming at least he knows hoping that one of the ravens comes flying when he passes past us tell him to just distract him okay so <laughs> Brooke, with your your kind being uh, uh, used to communicating with animals, this is nothing like it, despite these uh, machines being shaped after animals. And you're sort of like gesturing uh, at them, um, trying to not make too much noise, uh, and and trying to get them to do what you want. Uh, just make it, make it a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, you think they got it? You see them just pause for a moment and then just charge directly past you. This loud um, uh, clanking of metal as they make their way up the, up the uh, the dune and they, they just kick up so much dust all over you and it goes in your eyes and your lungs. Uh, 
some of you can't help but cough as this happens. Uh, and uh, directly ahead of you, uh, a, a battle between machines and undeath is uh, about to ensue. <clears throat> All right, that's our sign. Wait, get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys want to leave and let the machines handle this, yes? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Unless... Yeah. Are you uh, are you keeping one of the ravens or any of them? Or are they all? Going if I, in? I mean, by depends on what you love with your with my persuasion roll. We should we should keep one raven. Yeah, if I can do that, I would like some to stay uh, back, okay. but I'm not sure if it's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, as the machines are like the big ones, are all pushing past you, you're nearly knocked off your feet. Uh, you see the ravens catching up; they're flying low enough. Uh, they call out to one of them, and you like hold up your your arm so that the the raven will land on it, and you are completely ignored. Hmm. Uh, and then you keep going. You go around uh, and you you don't look back. You're just trying to be as fast as you can. Uh, but you, you will hear the noises just of metal being ripped apart. The mechanical snakes and, uh, and owlbear and crabs don't, don't make a noise. They don't vocalize anything. So all you hear is just the damage uh, that is unfolding. Uh, and occasionally the sound of something loud hitting, <laughs> hitting <laughs> heavy pillars of rocks. Uh, and you run and you run and you you put you put uh, you make sure the Pontifex stays on for room and. Uh, Whoever next falls behind uh, against uh, against the Duchess' w uh, wishes, it will get put on the other horse, um, and uh, you leave. You all incur in a point of exhaustion uh, as you keep moving as fast as you can until dawn is upon you. Uh, you are quite tired and you haven't taken a break in a while, but you don't dare to do so. Uh, now, without any of Orm's constructs that you had brought originally um, to uh, protect yourselves against and possibly fight against those that have taken Tekka from you, uh, you march on, continuing straight in the direction of the remains of stealing dread. Uh, let me let me bring this back up. Okay. And pocket. <clears throat> you take very very small breaks. Whenever the horses can't run anymore, uh, whenever you need to eat something real quick, and then you resume your march. Uh, your legs are quite displeased uh, with with this journey you're, you've undertaken. Um, how much further are you willing to go for your next long rest? Is there any indication that we are catching up, or is it just same trail, same? Mm. Ooh, they're really far up. Okay. <clears throat> I'd, I'd say that what you can determine is that the trail is like the... Um, as old as it was before like you're at a point where it's fresher but you're also like it's been another it's been another day 
Uh, so catching up? No, not quite. But definitely staying on the path. I think as the, the sun's going down, Viren will just kind of shake her head and I don't think we should... We need a rest today. We'll press on again if we need to tomorrow. All right. Let's see if it's the earliest time tomorrow, then. So if you want all of you should rest, I can stay alert while you sleep. Save us a little bit of time, a few hours. All right, I'll help you with the last shift. <clears throat> we long rest. In what order yep. are you keeping watch? Oh. Virian's going to stay up. First. I think maybe only for now. I, I did not hear what you said. Is she oh, so going to watch? I think so Bir Birin's, Birin's going to stay up first since she only needs to rest for four hours anyway. Okay. So she's going to try to take up as much watch by herself as possible. Mm -hmm. You call it the first four hours? Everyone... Devami, I can take two hours. And did Brooke offer? Yep. Devami and Brooke. the last one. Okay. I'll take the perception checks from the three of you then. At disadvantage because because of exhaustion, exhaustion yes okay but i get advantage from my shield so just normal okay good job guys thank you <laughs> gg team hey okay. wonderful As far as you are aware, nothing happens during the night. You are left undisturbed. You picked a spot where you felt like the tower wouldn't catch too much attention um, in this, in this uh, grove of petrified trees. Um, and so from a distance, your tower kind of looks like it's just part of the landscape. Just another tree, maybe a little bit taller than all the other ones. Um, uh, this means that you, from the ground, you don't have a whole lot of visibility around. But if you look out from like the top floor, from the windows, you can you can kind of see around. Uh, and each of you picking a different spot to to keep watch from. Um, occasionally, maybe dozing off a little bit during your watch, but fighting against it. Um, yeah, as far as you're aware, you are undisturbed. Your constructs are no longer watching the base of your tower, but um, nothing terrible happens. That we know of. <laughs> and so we march on. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So you march on. Uh, your legs having rested, the horses uh, seeming to be in a bit better, higher spirits. Uh, and you travel through this uh, uh, familiar terrain. Uh, up until the moment when you approach uh, um, kind of a downward slope and you catch sight of something further up ahead. Those of you who have been who have been here before still find the view to be uh, incredible. And for Virion, this is her first time witnessing the rib cage of a gargantuan dragon, several stories tall. Uh, but for those of you who have been here before, something is... Uh, different. A makeshift town has been erected beneath and around the ribcage, its bones now spanning far and wide to act as a massive rooftop for the people below. The empty spaces between the ribs have been filled with petrified foliage, offering protection from the sun and the wind. Dust covers everything in sight, clinging to the tents and filling every crack and crevice. The makeshift buildings themselves seem to have been erected in a hurry, with little regard for aesthetics or, perform or per permanence. Tents and shacks made of scrap, gems and stones are strewn about, forming a small, dusty village, not as colorful 
and nowhere near as bright as the original. It appears that the refugees from the flooded cave have gathered here, seeking safety and shelter beneath the remains of their ancient enemy. The stillness of Dustfall is now broken by the sound of chatter, people walking about, building, cooking meals over open flames. And with this, we're going to go back to Tekka for a moment. Hmm. I'm just going to leave this like that. Hey, Tekka. Mm -hmm. You spent some time on your own, waiting. Um, quickly, uh, Potrukash had started interacting with you uh, in order to pass the time. And you saw him trying to get your attention and pointing at things and then saying words in that language that you don't understand. And um, it clicked soon enough that... Uh, um, ooh, let me change the music. Eh, boop. It clicked soon enough that he was trying to teach you words. Uh, pointing at things and uh, pronouncing uh, uh, their names uh, in, in Krell. And uh, waiting for you to repeat and then correcting your pronunciation if you go along with it. Yeah, for sure. And this, this went on for uh, the, the majority of the day. Um, and actually... You realize soon enough that you're actually not quite sure if it's day or night. The fact that it's raining within the cave means that you have no idea um, where the sunlight is at. And uh, there is no change in the artificial illumination in Rashk uh, to indicate that people are currently sleeping or currently awake. There's just this constant uh, um, flow of people walking and, and working and preparing for something uh, until eventually... Uh, Tarsha comes to get you. The uh, the guards, they, they leave the manacles on you, they leave the chains on you, but they remove them from the parts where they are attached to the wall. Um, as Tarsha says, we we are living now, and um, you come with us. I understand. Are you your them... people safe? Uh, as you see, the guards also doing the same with Potrokash and just pulling him up to his feet. Um, uh, Tarsha, Tarsha just looks so tired, um, more anxious than ever, uh, just twisting his fingers all the time as he says, uh, Well, um, we, we live and uh, we leave. Lead the way. Uh, Tekka, much like your companions a week from now will do, you march towards uh, the uh, what eventually turns out to be the remains of Stilling Dread. Uh, and you are just uh, surrounded by people that, that both precede you and follow you. Uh, people who have just put together everything uh, important uh, that they absolutely need to take with them uh, and uh, have left their flooding cave. Uh, you have been taken out. By the, t by the time you walked out of the house you had been locked into, the water had already reached a foot and a half uh, um, of of depths, um, and th there was there was no sign that the rain was going to stop. Uh, um, here, before the rib cage of uh, Stealing Dread, uh, people had started to set up uh, uh, their own tents, those those with those strange translucent. Uh, very vibrant, almost glowing materials 
uh, that you've never quite seen before. You saw them start to um, cover up uh, the spaces between the ribs of steel and dread and uh, uh, set up uh, uh, a living areas directly underneath it. Um, and uh, you were sort of just relegated to this spot where you got to watch this, but but not for too long. Uh, as Archokash ta taught you how to say the words for, for trees and for wall and for tent and for dust. Uh, e eventually, uh, Tarsha stepped by your side again. Um, at, th at this point, it would have been a few days uh, since you left Norashk. Um, and it doesn't look like Tarsham got much sleep at all since then. Um, and he like kind of slumps down next to you and takes this deep breath uh, and takes out these notes written in a script that you're not familiar with. Um, and he holds them up like he's reading them out loud, uh, translating them on the fly uh, as he says, um, okay, so, a few things, but, uh, first, and, and, and then, like, he, he, he rolls up the paper again and just makes eye, eye contact with you, which uh, Tarsha doesn't do that often, and he says, how do you feel? Constrained, holding up the chains. <laughs> Um, uh, it, it, it is a silly question, <laughs> sorry. And you? Um, mm, I feel fear. You will feel safety again. I... I hope so. I hope soon. Um, perhaps if... if the gods answer us, then things will get back to normal. What is your question? Hmm... Do... Do you ever pray? I speak... with her. And she answers in her own way. When I pray, I... I like to tell about my day. I usually do not have requests, but this time I do. I have many. I want my home back. Your home is with you. It can be here. It can be elsewhere. My... My flowers... Uh, they... They do not survive, though. The earth finds a way. Flowers can grow. Tarsha sighs, looks down, takes like a handful of dust and sort of just moves it around. And then, kind of as if remembering what he's here for, he straightens his posture a little bit and uh, un unfolds a piece of paper once again and says, I... <clears throat> we have a plan uh, 
um, we take you to our gods and we explain everything and then we see what happens I am done sitting here if I can aid you then I will follow ah uh. Also, we and, and Tarsha seem, uh, seems not just hesitant, but more like he's he's reading the line that he's at just over and over. Um, like he's not quite believing what he's reading, and and uh, he seems to struggle to know exactly how to translate it. And during during this time of hesitation, you are approached by Kalvik. Um, uh, this time he he has clean robes. Um, he, unlike Tarsho, who looks more tired than before, um, I, I, I at least Kalvik uh, appears to have gotten some sleep. He, he also looks tired and stressed out, but uh, um, he's more dignified in the way he's dressed and clean, and he uh, stands up straight, um, and he. And Tarsha have a just very brief conversation in Krell, of which you like you're beginning to understand like one word here and there. Uh, still no idea of how their grammar works or anything, uh, but a few words thanks to Potrakash. Um, and as if uh, pushed on by by Kalvik, um, Tarsha resumes what he was trying to say, and uh, uh, he looks at you and Nez and Fair again. He says. We, um, we have made mistakes and uh, we have lost our home because of those mistakes. And it is now necessary that we change our ways. And you can feel Kalvik's stare uh, upon you. Um, as Tarsha continues, if we free you, will you help us? What will you ask of me? We ask that you do not leave and that you assist with building with hunting and with praying to our gods I will help provide I will help secure your people as Tarsha translates your answer to Kalvik, who just remains just uh, completely um, neutral in his expression. The Krelko do something that uh, uh, seemed unthinkable just a few days ago, and uh, they release who they perceive to be a devil from his chains. And what of him pointing to Potrakash? Kalvik hesitates as Tarsha translates and then speaks back and Tarsha says, um, do, do you wish for him to be free? I do. Then we do so you see Kalvik gesturing as the guards also release him from his bindings the two of them have 
a conversation directly between them without uh, uh, Tarsha translating it for you. Um, Otrokash has a bit of kind of a bittersweet expression, uh, but you do see him just nodding at you, understanding that this came uh, from you. Tekka gives the nod uh, to Otrokash and to Tar Tarsha. Hmm. I can help build homes, but I will need my tools. Okay. Uh, Pekka, um, followed always closely by Tarsha, who um, is less watching what you're doing and just here to support you and to translate uh, for any interaction that you might have with the Krelko. Um, you are reunited with your belongings. Um, you are reunited. I do believe that the party doesn't have Ollie, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine Ollie would leave. Okay, I, I, I don't. Know. I don't recall like uh, the, he, him being separated from you during or after the fight. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't think so. With Ollie, who is completely fine. Oh, he better be with you because we did not leave him out or feed him. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, does do the people here react to Ollie at all? Um, or... So it appears that Ollie was uh, in the care of uh, of a couple that you haven't you haven't met before, um, and uh, Ollie appears to be to be fed and to be fine and quickly curls up in in your arms. Um, Ollie does appear to be kind of. Um, like an, an uncommon animal to see around here, and the people who do see, um, if you're like carrying him around, usually you get like the su bit of a surprise stare. But mainly, people usually look at you when uh, you're anywhere or doing anything. Uh, some keep their distances. Some begrudgingly will work with you. Uh, very, very few seem to either not visibly express their discomfort or maybe to be okay with this um but this is how all your life has been it's not unique to them mm. uh i think tekka would offer to the couple take care ollie uh the ring of war it's a show of appreciation and gratitude Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah, they'll they'll take it. All right. Um, I think I know the answer, but I just want to like double, triple check. Uh, you you're going to have a few days where you are free to go and act as you wish do you do you stay with them Tekka follows his word and he sees how all the the rest that people are under right now and will not abandon that okay yeah all right then back to the present day Boop. um with the party arriving uh, where the remains of still in dread are and finding that uh, this appears to be the place that the, the Krelko that have escaped uh, the flooding Narashk uh, wh where they have gathered. Uh, you are a, a certain distance away. You can actually um, like see this kind of clearly as there are lights uh, now around uh, still in dread which weren't here before. Um, and uh, to, to your knowledge, you've gotten here before any Krolko noticed you. Um, what's your plan? Maybe we can send someone in to uh, do a little reconnaissance, probably. Uh, number one. Is it squeak time? I mean, I'm pretty sure the last time we put in 
squeak. He said that the priest could see him, right? Yeah, that's right. I don't know what it is about that guy. He's like got some third eye or something. I mean, I'm I'm decently good at moving about on scene. I can do a quick sweep. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Red. I'll try to keep a wide berth. If I'm not back in a few minutes, then something bad happened. Or if you hear or, gunshot, something bad happened. <laughs> or if we hear God. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I'll, I'll be quick. And... Virion, no. If no one else... Unless no one else volunteers to come with her, yeah, she'll just do a quick look about around, I guess, far like around the little mm -hmm. camp that she can mm -hmm. get. Yeah, like way, way further than like the, the size of my map, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, and then I'll take two rules from you. One is stealth and one is perception. All right, I'll do stealth first. Right. And perception. Okay. Um, you are reasonably quiet. Uh, what's mainly keeping you hidden is you taking advantage of the landscape, just making sure to stay behind uh, taller dunes of dust or behind petrified trees uh, and staying far, far away from uh, where anyone should be. Uh, the you don't even have to have to worry about uh, your leaving behind footprints too much, as uh, the, the dust here has been walked over uh, by many people over the course of many days, and uh, any trail you might be leaving behind is just one of many. Um, you personally, <clears throat> oh excuse me, you personally have never met uh, Taka, nope. but you've heard of uh, uh, the description of, of him. You've heard uh, why he was being kept uh, by the fact that he was believed to, to be a devil by the people uh, of the now flooded underground town. Uh, you've heard the story of him and Leshkri and uh, how he ended up being separated from the party. So by the time you see one person with, uh, uh, with these horns and this... And, unusual hair color that none of the other people there have uh, this jawline and these tusks that are reminiscent of Plurnan orcs um, you are simultaneously struck by the thought that, that this has to be him and also it can't be him because he's just up and about and working alongside the people who supposedly have imprisoned him um, so you're not quite sure what's going on with that but you do get to see um what this area looks like and you go all the way around so you see it from every direction um, struck once again by just the size of the, this rib cage um, and uh, the there's quite a large amount of people that have built uh, uh, this temporary town beneath and around it and you see because uh, you rolled a 19 uh, you also see a lot of people who go beneath the rib cage and then uh, go through some kind of underground uh, entrance uh, and disappear below the ground. Uh, or also, like it, there's there, there's a flow of people that seem to be traveling in and out from this place that is directly beneath the rib cage. Uh, catching your attention is also the large floating orange crystal that just emanates this brilliant light. Uh, and it's just floating above the remains of a currently not working and visibly broken fountain. Uh, since you're only 19, as you uh, circled back towards the party, you also just glanced back in the direction you guys came from. Uh, um, and just made sure that there was no trace of either machines or undead dragons uh, within view. And you didn't see anything. Cool. 
um, as Virian gets back to the party, she'll just look a little confused and what does your what's your friend look like again? A little bit like me, but bigger and walks like a person. Uh, horns. Yeah. But you tall. Yeah. Okay. You see um, him? What's I he doing? Is he okay? He, I, he alive? He's alive. I mean, at least looked like he was alive. Um, unless there's someone else here who looks an awful lot like him. He seemed to have been uh, helping, uh, doing some work. They've enslaved him. Um, he <laughs> didn't seem... He wasn't chained or anything, and he seemed to be, as far as I could tell, under his own free will. He wasn't acting to... I've seen a few people under mind control before. It didn't seem that, <laughs> unless it was very good. I should have known. Brooke, you know what this means. What does it mean? Stockholm Think. Syndrome. <laughs> 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 He's too nice for his own good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've read about that. Yep. It's uh, so there are people about. <laughs> I can take you back to where I saw him last. I mean, it's been a few minutes. He might have moved. Uh, just be wary. It seems there are more people here than it seems on the surface. They were moving below ground also. I'm not sure if we've mentioned this before, <clears throat> but these people were very keen on not killing Tekka, but did not care for us. I mean, if, regardless, should proceed with caution? Yeah. If we can get to your friend unseen, It'd be for the best. I didn't want to approach alone because he had never met me, met me before, and I didn't think that would end very well for me. All right, let's proceed. Proceed More how? Care. We'll take a look in the, ourselves, right? Just I think. Or did I misunderstand? We're just gonna walk right in. I think Virian would try to keep everyone at a wide berth, kind of backtracking to where she had seen Tekka. Okay. Uh, that means I'll take stealth rules from everybody else. I will roll Preferred Professor, who has disadvantage on stealth, and minus three, which makes it a seven. I'm just gonna write it in chat. I can. Here we go. Uh, Sid, would you mind rolling for the Bamia one more time? Yeah. Oh my god. Thank you. No problem. Straight up, Murder Claw. Murder Claw and the Bamia have rolled the same number. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Y'all. <Yeah. laughs> okay. It's not you a cycle. one. <laughs> you cycle around. This just helps us save time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, you circle around to, to where Virion had the, had the scene uh, uh, Tekka and we actually have to like go a little bit further than that. The Stega seems to have moved on to a diff to doing a different thing. You saw him holding his saw and using it. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. He saw in a non-intimidating <laughs> manner. In a non-intimidating manner. <laughs> um, and as Viren and Pip and and Squeak uh, hiding under Pip's scarf, uh, you're all uh, just peeking from around. Uh, a, a large rock. Uh, basically, everybody else is just sort of standing there. Uh, Murder Claw in particular, just looking very big and imposing <laughs> from a distance. Uh, 
Heck, how you see them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tekka would put a hand up. Start walking towards. He's calling uh, for help. <laughs> <laughs> everybody freeze! Everybody freeze! <laughs> <laughs> is Tarsha with Tekka at this point? Um, Tarsha is always... Most of the time he's nearby, so right at this moment... Uh, <laughs> he isn't. Uh, so I just rolled for it. Um, he like went off to get something to eat. Um, so you should be back in like 50 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tekka will start walking towards the group. Hip can't contain himself. He's gonna run up and give Tekka a hug. <laughs> we'll work on tactics later. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried about you. I, I was worried for you too. I, it's You're good okay. to see you safe. Th there are many you? people here who need help. Well, Is the professor with you? Sorta. <laughs> 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 Pontifex's armor is just shining bright <laughs> in the sunlight. <laughs> Upon um. for room. He seems deep in sod. <laughs> seems, seems ready to like He's be killing been everybody. Probably. That spell book for two days straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think essentially uh, Tekka would make a request for the professor to make some water in the fountain because there's not a lot of water sources here and people do not want to approach the sea very much. So yeah. Essentially, drinking water, please. Mm hmm Wow, I I mean, something tells me that Pontifex would not be keen to helping out the people that have, like, hurt you guys so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, I can't say for sure. So for now, it is Schrodinger's water. Like, it is both <laughs> there and not there until Matt uh, confirms or not. <laughs> right. I like it. Um, I like it a lot. But, um... Yeah, with, with the group, or at least some of you approaching the village, uh, Pip and Tekka meeting like halfway between the spot where you guys saw him and uh, um, the actual settlement that has been built around still in dread. Um, people more and more take notice of you. Uh, you see some of them leaving in a hurry, uh, and eventually uh, you recognize as Tarsha is coming up with like this sandwich <laughs> um, it, the general feel is that people are surprised to see you uh, what would you like to do nobody is like stopping you there's definitely a lot of eyes on you. Tekka, can you explain us what is going on? The rush was flooded. Yeah, they we saw needed that. shelter. They went here. So... For what they said, their plan is to speak with their gods. For an answer a solution, a way to return home. And in the meanwhile, they survive. They rebuild here. So you're good? The reason I am free is because I am helping them. They are people who are afraid. So I am helping them. So, do you need help helping them? Think, think twice if you want to get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka, uh, the, the, there is a woman here you don't recognize, yeah. and yeah, it was just a visible yeah. lack of talents. 
Oh no, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka doesn't know. Uh huh. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, also just sees no one riding Duchess as well. Um, I imagine. Correct. Um, yeah. I do not know who you are, but I am not in danger. This isn't the time for my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I will speak with them. See if they will tolerate you here. Oh um, yeah, Tekka. This is this is Virian. She came here after. After. Telex is gone. It's rather complicated, or not? We're in the tower, and one of the doors opened, and Virian was flushed in with one of the devils. And, well, they left very on here. So it took Tekka. Ah, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> the sea made a trade. The sea sucks. <laughs> no offense, Furia. <laughs> this is a nice sea. And you know nothing of where Talix is. Except I mean, for the sea. Underwater, maybe. Aside from that, no. That is a large and unknown place. Also very haunted. Old devils. I was told never to go deep into the sea for a reason. If he is there now, I do not know how he will return. I think there's a lot about this that we don't all understand quite yet, but for now I'm here and I said I'd help rescue you, but it seems you have that part under control yourself. There are still many problems, and I will not deny your help. You seem to have gained the trust of everyone here, so then I will trust you. I will speak with them and see if you can stay. You are strong, you are smart, you could do a lot of help, a lot of good. So if they don't want us here, what's then? Then I... Then I do not know. I made a promise. For some reason they believe I am important for their... communication with their gods. Do not believe they will let me go. Like nothing. And with that, I think Tekka will uh, turn to Tarsho. Yeah, Tarsho has been just silently and awkwardly standing uh, um, off to the side. Um, you, you could see that he was, like, listening, but not understanding. But making an attempt to. These people... Yeah, speaking as a fear. Mm -hmm. These people are capable. They are trustworthy and they can help you too. Please allow them passage here. Um, Tarsha looks off in the distance in the direction he just came from. He begins twirling his fingers again and he says, I... I can not say. Um, Kalvik is coming. Will you wait? We will wait. And uh, Tekka turns back to the group. The priest makes the choices here. And I do not believe him to be on our side.
do we have a way of convincing them that your presence here is important, helpful, positive? I mean, I could be quite charming when I want to be. If they need help carrying some stuff, I can help them. I mean, I, I have to admit I'm a little empathetic to their situation. Pardon up and moving like that so quickly. These okay. are vulnerable people without a hole. I think there is a way. Um, I mean, we can help them, but they know what this place is, right? Are they not worried that there's going to be more hearts that are come out, going to come out and, and attack them? That is a good question. Has Tekka seen any hearts? No, but you have been in the chamber beneath still in dread. You've helped with like clearing up the cobwebs and uh, removing like the, the, the broken and rusty um, was what it, the, the metal bars so, uh, that, that closed up the various sections of the tomb um, and uh, it has been some floors of it. Uh, most floors of it have been refurbished to be like living quarters and, other, and, and storage and, and other places. Um, but you have seen uh, Kalvik hanging out uh, at the very bottom, um, praying on that circular stone platform right in the center of it. Uh, you have seen no traces of any more hearts, um, at least the moving and living ones. There was mo one moment when you helped take out uh, a, like a, um, when you helped open up uh, a coffin that was still there and it had uh, once a cre such creature in inside that was not animated, not moving, not attacking anyone. Uh, and you basically helped with like taking it out and moving it elsewhere. And it was like your only time seeing them again. Mm -hmm. During our time here, there have been no moving heart creatures. But you bring up a good point. I think the priest shows an interest in that place. If you tell of your knowledge, your experience with this place, that could be a convincing argument. Another point that uh, should probably be mentioned that uh, the undead dragon that you did or did not defeat earlier, I'm not entirely sure, is roaming the area. It seems far off now, but it was worryingly close to here. That, that dragon, if that dragon is arriving here, then we will need your help. We should warn them. Uh, Tekka looks back. Has Kavik mm -hmm. approached at this yeah. point? Some people have started to kind of gather around you. Uh, some making more or less of an effort to to uh, hide their uh, curiosity or worry uh, around you. It, the, the longer you talk, the bigger the crowd around you formed. Uh, and around this time, uh, um, the the crowd parts as Helvik approaches. Um, as I was describing to, to Tekka earlier, he has changed uh, his robes, and right now he's wearing this uh, um, their deep green color. Um, uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Okay, here we go. When uh, I'll, I'll take an inside check from everybody. Do I roll for Tekka and for Devamia? Um, I'll take Devamia from here. Okay. Let's go! Okay. That makes it uh, 
Uh, oh, that makes it Brooke, Virion, and Tekka, who can... The expression on the priest, uh, very forcefully neutral. Uh, this man is feeling, feeling a lot of emotions uh, under the surface that he's uh, fighting very hard to keep to keep down. Uh, the previous hostility is not quite gone, but he, he does seem to be in some kind of situation where he has to put it aside. Uh, you see that these movements are a little, a little stiff. Uh, and he mainly avoids eye contact. He establishes it uh, more perhaps out of... Uh, um, just to acknowledge your presence, but not necessarily to uh, to mean much more than that. For Brooke and for Tekka, the the sense that this man is thinking back to your previous encounter and to the people who died during it, um, it, it feels like things are certainly not fixed. And perhaps he blames you for some of the current troubles, but uh, when he speaks to Tarsha and Tarsha translates for him, at least in the words that Tarsha uses to translate, the that hostility, those kinds of thoughts that seem to be going through the priest's mind, none of them come through, uh, which means he he's either choosing not to, uh, to say any of it out loud, or perhaps Tarsha is... Uh, uh, sanitizing a little bit what he's saying. Um, either way, the the translator speaks for him, uh, taking his words and um, speaking in, in first person for Kalvik, uh, as he says, We had foreseen your return, and we acknowledge that Mistakes have been committed by us, and that we, we are paying a price because of it. We mean to fix things, and to show that we do not wish to harm you. We grant you my power. Kalvik removes necklace around his neck and holds it out. Will anyone take it? Sure. Okay. Brooke, this this man with a ward and a flick of his wrist, he had erased you from existence just a week ago for a few seconds, banishing you to this void where simultaneously felt like you were drowning and also you were just nowhere and you were nothing. And the memory of that just flashes before your eyes. Um, but you who have lived through uh, the longest and most bloody war that Plorin has ever gone through. Um, you who have seen your friend who had taken his own life after this war and now has a second chance and he's making... He, he has completely changed and he's making good use of this second chance. Um, those are the kinds of thoughts that push you to take a step forward and extend your hand and take this necklace and wonder if uh, things can actually change for the better between groups of people that are just so vastly different from one another and seem to be utterly unable to understand one another. Uh, this necklace, necklace you're holding is just full of gemstones and each of them has been sculpted into a different uh, geometric shape. And uh, um, you yourself are not a spellcaster, but your kind is just just has this natural affinity for magic, and you do have like a couple of tricks up your sleeve. And even you, um, who who is not the studied wizard at his pontifex, uh, can just feel the magic that uh, emanates from this item. 
Um, Archer speaks for Kalvik again and uh, says, If you will uh, accept it, our gods wish to see you. Wait, all of us or me? Or Tekka? <laughs> uh, Tasha seems to be speaking to the group, although you do see Kalvik like eyeing Virion, like he's not quite sure what she's doing here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Tasha, Tasha is addressing the group, the party. I look at Tekka and see if he has any resistance to that, and if not, I nod. Yeah, I think Tekka nods to you, Brooke. All right. Let's talk to your god. Okay. Uh, Brooke, you are in possession of Kalvik's uh, holy uh, necklace. Um, and uh, if if you are okay with this, then Kalvik begins to walk away, and uh, Tarsha is quick to tell you to, to follow. Yeah. I think Virion will follow. Virion is like obviously on like high alert though, like head on a swivel in case anything feels out of sorts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same here. Pip just tugs on Tekka's shirt and <laughs> leans in. Um, sh well, should we tell them about Cloud Fallen first? <sighs> Good call. Tarso, one thing. Tarsha comes to a very, very sudden halt. Kalvik should know. The dragon is arriving this way. And it could be a danger to everyone. Tarsha seems to not get it right away. First he looks up at the sky, then looks at the, the remains of still in dread. And then a few seconds where he's squinting and, and then eyes widen. Oh, cloud fallen. Yes. Why here? Um. Oh no no no! And and he's like catching up to Kalvik, and the two of them have a bit of a hushed conversation. Um, Tarsha looking far more worried about this than Kalvik is, although um, the most perceptive uh, among you so will will say Tekka and Brooke do pick up on like this shift in Kalvik's expression. Um, there's a couple more conversations that happen as Kalvik addresses some guards and people begin to disperse. Um, and something is is put in motion. But as for Kalvik himself, he eventually just gestures at Tarsho and resumes walking wherever it is that he's leading you. Which is towards the remains of Still in Dread. All right, we continue. Yep. Okay. Uh, beneath Still in Dread, and then down a staircase uh, most of you have already uh, seen before. And then into this underground crypt. Ah, Tekka, you had a hand in this. For those of you who have been here before, the place is cleaner. Cobwebs are gone and um, dust is gone. Uh, all all the uh, all these openings, uh, there's curtains now hanging in front of them, and it seems that people are doing things in each of these separate alcoves. Um, uh, Veer into your eyes, this is a quite large kind of underground building that uh, seems to be old and at this point it's I do a little unclear what it ever was for um 
it's simultaneously in right now a bit of a an underground village uh and it, it feels like it it had some kind of original uh, ceremonial purpose uh based on the shape of it but uh, all you see is just this old stone building that is being uh, uh used for for something vastly different than its original purpose you're taking down these flight flights of stairs uh multiple until you get all the way to the bottom um one moment fire big <laughs> what fire big fire big Big fire? That's what it says. Wait, what? Fire big. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Ha>. <laughs> uh, nope. Not allowed. Fire no longer big. Probably all fire Aww, is big. fire. <laughs> no more fire. Fire no, small. No. Fire small. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my place in my notes. It's all my fault. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're fine. Notes big. <laughs> notes big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all the way down to the bottom of this building, as Calvic stands on this stone, uh, circular stone platform in the middle and looks up uh, uh, at this section of the building, uh, which is currently empty, but it feels like something was supposed to, to be there in, uh, at some point in the past, the way it's, it's, it's designed. Um, and yeah, Calvic looking up at it. Uh, he speaks to Tarsha, Tarsha translating, and then Taka translating from Mez and Fair, so through this uh, usual chain uh, of, of translations, uh, you are told that uh, <laughs> that uh, um, well, let, 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 me, let me put it in actual dialogue. Uh, Tarsha for, for Kalvik says our gods sense uh, the mark of another god upon you. Uh, we think that you can speak to them. And if you do, our village can be saved. And and our gods it might... Um, and then you see, you see Tarsha hesitating and like immediately change the wording on that, uh, as it says. Uh, but probably, uh, certainly will also help you um, with anything. How do we speak with them? Um, now Kalik steps down from the circular stone platform and gestures at it with Tarsha translating for him. Um, walk up. Let me. Oops. The music is struggling. Hmm. There we go. Mm. Uh, you are invited Nothing to stand more. on the stone no platform. Words. Um, uh, no Tarsha. ritual. Tarsha says, um, a, a prayer is necessary. Uh, we, we take care of it. Uh, yeah, take a little look, look back at the group. Will you follow? Can I make one more inside check to see if there's any intent on hurting us and tricking us, even if we had this thing before. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll. Does it seem like they want one of us to stand on it or all of us? All of you. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> also suspicious. Mm. Also, if I check the room here. Oops, uh, yes, did yes. I just cast a magic circle around all of you? DM would never do anything to hurt us like that. Nah. Nah. I, I, I don't understand. Do you think this is a little too easy? <laughs> Have I hurt you so much before in the past? <laughs> okay, 8, 14. Um, Kavik just has this ability to maintain a neutral expression through most of this. Uh, the biggest change on his face having been when he uh, was told about Cloud Fallen. Um, but otherwise, you both still get this feeling like he he is unhappy about this, uh, but has to go along with it. Um, so it's not exactly kindness that you see in his eyes. Um... <laughs> Uh, per particularly, uh, like, uh, Brooke, for you, it's just very hard to tell. But here, you can see that that kind of hostility uh, in the way he's looking at the group. But not, not at you. He doesn't seem to have strong feelings about you. Uh, but also that kind of, like, like he's holding back. Um, so the overall vibe that you're getting is, well, this guy is not really our ally. But what he's actually trying to do, that's a little beyond you. I think Yvirian just look at him, look at Tekka, and the rest of the group, and back at Tekka, and she'll just kind of shrug and step up to Tekka. No risk, no reward, right? Thank you. I'll step up as well. Yeah, that? sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pip steps up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Pip really feels like he's being watched by Kalvik. Um, yeah. Not not really him, but more like his scarf. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a devil in my scarf. So what? <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem? <laughs> 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 oh, if Kalvik could understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, your horses and the murder claw have stayed back. They're like they're outside of this building. They probably physically couldn't. Like, would have struggled to come in here. Um, but uh, um, the, the Vamia and Freda seem a little hesitant and they mainly look up look at you to see if you want the Vamia to come with hmm. she also seems a little like the way she's eyeing the stone circle just like mm. I think it's okay if she doesn't I don't know how the rest of the group feels might not be a bad idea to have a couple people not in the circle just in case anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> keep her outside. Um so the Vami would ask Tekka to translate and like request that some of them do not take part in this, basically. Um and uh, there is no resistance uh, to this suggestion. Um, despite the Vamia having been there when, when you guys fought Kalvik, um, Kalvik seems to have less of an interest in her. In the same way, he seems to be less interested in Vivian compared to the rest of you. Uh, and permission is granted for somebody to ab abstain from this. So how cramped is it for all of us to stand on this A little platform? bit. <laughs> yeah. It seems to have been designed for like maybe three people. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Tekapip, Brook, uh, Virion, uh, Pontifex. 
Uh, I want to see it. <laughs> I request. <laughs> that we bring, see bring, it. Yeah, put your tokens down oh so we can God. more easily roll for initiative. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me take off the grid and make it easier. Oop. Don't push me, Marion. It's very cramped up here. <laughs> Rook taking up a lot of space. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, what did you just call me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad. It's mainly that's, your little yeah, platforms yeah, that, uh, that are taking up yeah. a space, but you guys standing there, it's fine. Nice. Um, Pontifex is probably muttering, yes, this is perfect fire fireball <laughs> radius. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around, make sure nobody's about to fireball you all. <laughs> um, Alex is absent, but Pontifex also having some clerical powers. He would know, and we're going to pretend that he that he told you. Um, no, like to his understanding, unless Calvick has some kind of like backup necklace. Uh, he just handed Brooke basically his focus, and in theory, that should prevent him from casting most magic, unless Lidarians do things way differently. Um, and it might be the only reason why Pontifex might be willing to put up with this, because I, I imagine he's not very happy. Um, not the most forgiving kind of person. Uh, and with all of you standing here... Uh, Kalik turns his back on you. Uh, he's right here. Uh, looks up at this platform and begins uh, to speak. None of you knowing exactly what he's saying, uh, but it seems this just monotone, um, and it seems to be like a, a practiced kind of speech. He feels very prayer-like, and you all listen, and all you have is just the sound of the of the words of each syllable, but none of the meaning. Um, you're left to wonder if what's taking place right now has anything to do with the original purpose of this place, or with what happened to it afterwards, and really not quite sure what you're doing here. But Tekka is set on helping the same people who were ready to just imprison him for life. Um, and there is this awareness that... Uh, whether you do or do not feel guilty about it or feel like it is your fault, uh, the fact remains that your arrival in Narashk ultimately set... Uh, in motion the events that have destroyed one of the most spectacular places you've seen in Lidaria thus far. Uh, and whether you feel like you, you owe it to them to fix it, or like uh, they d you don't owe them anything, or whatever your feelings are on the matter, it seems like you are on track to uh, perhaps put things back the way they were before. Uh, Viren, you have just been whisked into this crazy scenario and you yourself are a tiny bit lost at the moment and you're not quite sure if you're uh, on the right path and <laughs> it's not the craziest thing that you've done and so you listen and just <laughs> listening to this speech that doesn't mean anything to you it uh, it has this effect where your mind wanders off since you can't really listen to it you're thinking all these thoughts and looking around and making sure that nothing and no one is sneaking up on you. Tarshua stepped away, um, just giving you space but not uh, leaving entirely. Um, and because of all of how all of you are kind of on edge um, in your own mind, but also very aware of what's going on around you, um, it's almost impossible not to notice the moment when uh, there is light that shines upon the circle that you guys are standing on uh, and looking up you see the sky wide open despite you being underground and uh, your your mind 
needs a moment to like think about how this is possible if there was a some kind of mechanism that opened up part of the ceiling directly above your heads or, or what's going on it feels like there is sunlight and it's actually pure intense sunlight not filtered through all the dust that is just constantly filling the air of dust fall but it's it's warm it's bright uh it feels nice and then that that feeling that there is sunlight that directly shining on your skin uh, it immediately goes away and is replaced by a different kind of feeling this kind of cold chill not hostile um but more like you are standing directly beneath the full moons of Lidaria uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, the light that is shining upon you is no longer sunlight, but it is moonlight, and everything feels uh, cold, and it feels like it's getting darker, and like all the lights that are lit in this area, uh, they're, they're gone. And all the people that were around in this building, they, have, they are also gone, and everything is so quiet, and still, and you are suddenly whisked away, upward, towards the night sky. That's where we'll end the session. Woo! Roll new characters next time? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll die. Straight to heaven. <laughs> Do not pass go. <laughs> <laughs> Do not collect $200. <laughs> Oh man, that's cool! Yes. I'm excited. We, do we get to learn the secrets of stealing dread? <gasps> well, we'll find out next uh, Sunday. Oh. And the second, are we good? Uh huh. Before yeah. before Easter. Plot okay. big. <laughs> Plot big. <laughs> I hope to have you all there uh, for it. And uh, welcome back, Tekka. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yay. Yay. We missed you. It was fun being Devami for a little bit. No, I really like that. I'm going to be yoinking in the car to sheet away from you. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> memories, Take memories, screenshot, screenshot. memories. Of course, of course, memories. <laughs> it's to put on your fridge. I actually need you guys to pick up your your mini before I clear the table. And uh, yeah, with that, um, I'm just going to see you next time. Uh, wow. Dennis, what are these three inspirations you got over there? Um, you know what? I've kept them safe because my table neighbor actually. Uses them quite frequently. <laughs> <laughs> so, since he can only store two, and I have gained the superpower of storing three. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's your it's your summary next time. Yeah. Uh, so if you want I to mean, it's okay two... if I makes a if it makes a if it makes a summary and give it away to someone else. Oh, the yeah. inspiration yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. Of course. All right. You'll you'll do the summer and you'll gift away your inspiration. I'll I'll allow mm -hmm. it. Thank you, thank you. Okay then. With that, I am going to save the game and uh, let you all go. Hope you enjoy thank the rest you of for your the Sunday. Session. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're quite welcome. Welcome back to Still in Dread. Yay! It's like I never left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.